Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the gospel in seven words, that's as we take seriously Peter's command to prepare ourselves to confess the hope we have in Christ, we're considering how we might summarize the gospel in seven brief words, and our hope is that these summaries can at least introduce the, the core of the gospel and hopefully instigate uh, further conversation. Um, well, uh, last week, um, we considered what is necessary to confess the gospel, and when we're making a, a personal confession, really two things stand out. One is a recognition of our sin, on the one hand, and a proclamation of God's work of salvation for us uh, in Christ. Now, there are actually many ways in which we could confess uh, the gospel, because, uh, because there's many ways in which the scriptures, lots of images that the gospel uses, a variety of rich metaphors and description of God and his work of our salvation. Uh, the good shepherd rescuing his sheep, the suffering servant taking on punishment, God speaking through a prophet to breathe life into dry bones, the Lamb of God reigning on his throne. And we could go on and on. Uh, we could notice many different biblical themes like sickness and healing, hunger and thirst, deception and truth. We could highlight qualities of God. He's loving, forgiving, strong, and mighty, and pure. And any of these could work as we make our, our own confession. Um, but over the next several weeks, the goal is for you to choose one of these kinds of themes or metaphors and spend some time reflecting on it, not just internally, but also out loud a little bit. Um, now, I'm going to ask you some questions today. We're going to do some light workshopping, you might say, as uh, we look at some key words and stories from the Bible and and generate a list of, of potential ideas as we think about crafting our version of the gospel that is faithful to the scriptures, but also maybe speaks to us personally. Um, by the end of the tonight, uh, hopefully we'll have some raw material uh, that, that you can at least think about and perhaps even craft uh, your own version of uh, seven words or less. Um, so uh, let's, let's get started. Our first, we have a, a reading from Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 19. As today's theme is going to be focused on captivity and freedom, Luke records the beginning of Jesus' preaching ministry. That was our reading for today. Um, and it says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And as the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him, he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are opposed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives. Um, so here's where we have some, some questions. What's, uh, let's think about this. What's it, describe what it's like to be a captive with a single word. Anybody think of any, Donovan? Prisoner. Prisoner, okay, good. So we've got prisoner. Um, any other words that describe, maybe not exactly, just any, any um, one word that describes how you might feel, or um, any other, we've got to get at least two up there. Trapped. trapped. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, trapped. Loneliness. Huh? Loneliness. Loneliness. Trapped. Lonely. Restrained. Okay. Hopeless. Hopeless. Now we're really making our uh, magic screen work. Um, Hopeless. Last one. Invisible. 
Invisible, okay. Yes, and true in some senses. We might feel invisible or isolated. Now, what would be the worst part, do you think, about being in prison? The loneliness, okay. Yeah, being feeling alone. I mean, probably some overlap between these um, things, but anything else what might be the worst. Some might say the food. <laughs> They're restricted, restricted um, food. We probably wouldn't be having nice chili or pizza, or or if we did, I think it wouldn't be quite so nice from what I've heard. You might be bored. You might be bored. Yeah, that would be a lot of time. I'm sure that some people would say that. Yeah, too much time or bored, whatever. So okay, good. This you know it. The be um. So we've got some answers there. Uh, we'll switch to the next screen. My phone doesn't want to stay awake. Um, uh, can you think of any Bible characters who were imprisoned? John, OK, John, Paul, yeah. Peter, Peter yeah. We got a good list. Um, any Old Testament? Joseph, we could, if you count being thrown in a bottom of a well, I mean, that, not only Joseph, but Jeremiah, Daniel, yeah, and a prison with what? Jonah, Jonah yeah, that's a, <laughs> Jonah as well. Yeah, a lot of J's. Yeah, words are appearing. It's, uh, we're, we're, it's magical. Well, maybe not quite. Um, so, what uh, um, beyond being in a, oh, okay beyond being in a physical prison? What other types of captivity imprison people today? So you know, prison is one, but what are some other things that imprison people? Addiction, yeah, yeah, probably we could have all kinds of um, sin, yeah, yeah. That's a good biblical answer. What's that? Mental illness, yeah, true, yeah, mental illness. Um, Okay, Elisha, if, do you have something to add to the conversation? No, okay. Um, we, well, I was thinking of one. Oh, sickness. Sickness is kind of a, you know, you're trapped in, I, I know people, or, you know, simply um, old age uh, can feel like a prison, you know, for, for you know, if you, for, kind of similar, you know, if you're, you can't get out or do anything, that's not a whole lot of fun. Um, Relationships, yeah, that's true too. Yeah, relationships can feel like um, a number of them. Um, so there's a lot of things, right? Obviously, that can that can imprison and hold us back. Um, we're gonna move on to some verses, hopefully, to talk about this. Um, so could I have? I'll need a couple different volunteers. There's not a lot of options. So, so. <laughs> All right, read. Yeah, Jesus says, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. Um, John 8, 36. All right, Donovan. John 8, 36 says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Um, uh, and then a couple, uh, a couple more verses. This, uh, if we, I guess I can go to the next one. Um, and then we got three more. I can always read one if we. All right, Doug, Doug. Oh, his hand was higher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Setting free those who are giving sight to the blind. An error by myself and somewhere in there he's annoying me too. Anyways, um, you could be you could be a slave to technology if it doesn't, in a variety of ways, including if it doesn't work right. Uh, but um, other uh, next another reader, Elisha. No, how about Elisha? You read the Galatians five one. Okay, no, all right. Um, Donovan, read one. Galatians. 
one says, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of pain. And so, and then one more. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So we got quite a few verses, there's, and there's a lot more, uh, but the, which the gospel is framed in terms of being set free. Um, when you think of being freed from sin and death by Jesus, what words come to mind? Someone's going to be a prisoner in their room. Elisha. Salvation. What other words? When you think of being freed from sin and death by what Jesus has done, done, done. Forgiveness. Forgiveness, okay. Good. Any others? What? Relief. Okay. Hallelujah. Oh, we'll, we'll make an exception for that. And we're in line with <laughs> Can't help but, yeah, relief. All right, good. And beyond being in physical prison, what other types of captivity? Oh, wait, did I? I think I repeated one there. So, we've covered that one. Um, so, if you look at, 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 maybe if you've been keeping any notes, or if you recall back, if you look at the difference between our description of being a captive and some of those feelings that we have versus the description of being freed um, from sin in Christ, uh, we think that's a powerful a powerful connection and something a lot of people can relate to is, you know, it's not only freedom and captivity is not only for those who have, um, who are in prison, but almost all of us, I probably all of us have been imprisoned by any number of things. And, you know, if we go back to Jesus's point, he says, anyone who sinned is a slave to sin. And so all of us are uh, enslaved to sin and need the freedom that um, Christ gives to us. Um, and that is what, what Jesus has done for us. He frees us from all sorts of things and from the underlying thing, which is sin, which enslaves all of us. In, um, Psalms, in Psalm 34, verses 17 through 19, David wrote these words, When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. And that's, many are the afflictions of the righteous. It doesn't say we'll be free from afflictions, but we will be set free from afflictions. Um, and that is the good news, not only for others, but for you and me tonight as well. That Jesus has freed us from all that holds us captive through the might of of his word, of his life, and because of his suffering, death, and resurrection. And for his glory and our good, Jesus does free us. He frees us from any number of things, including sin, death, and the power of the devil, so that we might live in him as his sons and daughters, no longer as slaves, but as free. Um, and so as you consider how you would summarize the gospel in your own words. Um, keep in mind these words and phrases, uh, and, and we'll continue to, to work on this. And I encourage you this week to reflect on the freedom that Jesus has won for you and reflect on how that might have some application in your life, that you have been freed. What does that mean now? And, of course, rejoice, for he has come to set the captives free, and you are free. In Jesus' name. Amen.